Hello, my name is Alarak Hamaka and today I'm presenting you a tutorial about interactive videos in H5P. We're going to add video, add labels, tables, questions and finally address how to do assessment and the feedback. So let's start by creating an interactive video. So for this we assume we have um, H5P installed on WordPress and we create a new title, let's name it interactive video for the purpose of this tutorial and we can select the content type. So if we previously created content we could upload it here in the content selector, this is called the content hub or we can search for other content types that exist already. So we have different ways of looking at this from A to Z, the newest or what we use regularly and you see here all these different types of contents and today we're going to deal with one special type of content which is called the interactive video. So we're going to ignore all these other elements and we will easily find it by typing interactive in the search field and we just select it. Now once we have created the interactive video element we have to choose a video to make it interactive. So this is the first step you see upload or embed video shows up in the first tab of the interactive video editor. We click the plus field and here you have two options. Either upload a video file or you can link directly to a YouTube file. This is one we created before. And there are other options regarding copyright and these things. But the next thing we want to do is to add the interactions. So for this purpose we confirm and you see similar to the course presentation that we have many elements here and we can play in the dedicated HTML player the video. The first thing we're going to add to the interactive video are labels. So the labels are situated on the top left next to text and table and link, image elements, uh, statements, single choice, set multiple choice, true false questions, fill in the blanks, drag and drop, mark the words, drag text, a crossroads and navigation hotspot. We are not going to talk about all of these objects today. So we start with a label to make it simple and wherever we stopped this will record the time so this is a label which will be from second 6 to 16 this is default and we can just add some text here um, where we say this is the poster so we describe what we are seeing in the image we can position this label and for testing we play back and see what is happening with the label. So as soon as we come to the position with a time code number 6 we see the label appearing and it will stay there for the time that we have chosen. If we want to edit this we can do it. You notice that at this moment the video is not pausing so it will continue to to go. We want to make this a little bit later and a bit shorter and eventually we want to pause the video. So as you can see now we play the video and as soon as this label appears the video stops. So if the user wants to continue he has to click in the movie or press the play button to continue the movie. Now we 
can add another label. So this is second number 14 to 24. Default again, we have 10 seconds and we will rename the default text to the plan corresponding to what we see here in the picture. So this is the plan. sequence starting here with elements and we want to add tables so this is very useful if we want to display a list so let's look at our video again and say we have here the contents of the package and for this purpose we will choose an element which is the table. So the table will display again at the present time and we give it a heading and we have by default already a little table here. So we can change this or we can add a new table if you want to do this kind of thing, we define the table properties with rows and columns and very much like a simple HTML table, you have the possibility to enter a heading. So these will be the part and the amount and we will inform the user that the number of bars in the package should be 10 and eventually the side panels need to be two. So we delete the default table that was here below and the default columns. So we have our little table here uh, we want to display. If we're happy it, we click done and we have chosen now a button. So we have two possibilities to display the table directly or to display a button which will display then a table when it, once it is clicked. So we can also change the editing a little bit. So for the moment we will post it as a poster and show the full table directly without any interaction from the user. So in order to test the element, I play here. And again, if we pause the video, we don't need to make it so long. Finally, as we are progressing with our tutorial video, we also want to add questions. So similar to the course presentation, we have the same elements here like true false questions or multiple choice that we can add. Again, we can choose if we want to add as poster or as button, which means that the question will appear directly or it will appear on a button. And here we will make a true false answer, just asking, is it very difficult? And we will say, ask for the correct answer would be no. So this is very easy. We are done. And you see that automatically this widget is placed as a poster on top of the video. And you can see on the bottom of the HTML player, little circles indicating that there is some interaction taking place here. Finally, we want to check the assessment and the possibility to give a qualified feedback. We have 
the statement element at the end of the video which generally allows to ask a certain number of questions like a summary and you can write some sentences and let the user decide if this statement is correct and by this verifying if the user really understood the lesson. So we have a set of statements and the first statement is the correct one. So the first one is true and all the other statements are wrong. So we will say it is important to have all parts that come in the box. Of course, if parts are missing, we cannot build this together. There are no spare parts. So this is the correct phrase and we will add a wrong phrase. If parts are missing, it is okay. Of course, it is not okay. And we can add another statement. So we will ask a question. The number of side panels is three. And the number of side panels is two. So these are questions regarding the side panels and we then add another statement. So we will have, we will have three parts and the shelf is made for lightweight shoes. Again, the first statement is correct and the wrong statement will be the shelf is made for heavy shoes. So now we have three statements and we will define some custom feedback. So these are three questions. So if all questions are correct, it is 100%. If one question is correct, it is only 33%. If two questions are correct, it is 66%. So we are going to give a different answer to the user depending how correct his total number of questions is. So at 33% we're going to say one answer is correct, please study again. Only one answer is correct. And we add a range from 34 to 36% where we have two answers correct. So we can him, tell him with 66% you're better than the average but you can still study more and eventually if someone has all the answers correct between 67 and 100% we can send congratulations you know all the answers so the possibility here is to add different ranges or to distribute this evenly so this is actually what we already did and when we are done, we can confirm we have created the final statements as a button. So this will open once we click this button. We confirm the creation of this interactive video example. And we will now verify what we did. So we can see the first interaction with a button opening we close it and we continue with play here comes the true false question final statements as a button. So you see the first statement. If parts are missing, it is okay. Choose the correct element. So the correct elements are added on top and the shelf is not made for heavy shoes but for lightweight shoes. This is 
the end. Thank you for watching. I hope this tutorial was useful for you.